This is a revision video for the quantitative side of the GCSE chemistry topic rates of reaction. In this video we're going to look at how we can calculate rate using either numbers that you've been given or a graph. By the end of this video you should be able to define rate of reaction, recall an equation to calculate mean rate of reaction, calculate the mean rate using either numerical data that you've been given or a straight line graph, and finally calculate the rate of reaction for a particular time point on a curved graph by drawing a tangent. The rate of a reaction is its speed. So when an exam question asks you about rate, they're asking you about how quickly it's going. We can express this either qualitatively or numerically. In order to calculate a number for how fast a reaction is going, we need two pieces of information. We always need to know how long the reaction has been measured for, what the time is. And then we also need to know either how much reactant has been used up or how much product has been made. Depending on the particular reaction, these numbers could be a mass measured in grams or a volume measured in centimetres cubed. For higher tier, you also need to express this in moles, but you may not learn what a mole is until quite near the end of the GCSE, so don't worry if you don't know yet. For each one of these calculations, you need to be taking either a mass or a volume and dividing it by a time. It's always going to be the time that you're dividing by. You also need to watch out for whether you're using a mass or a volume. If it's a mass, then your final units for rate will be grams per second, but if it's a volume, they'll be centimetres cubed per second. So, if 72 grams of iron reacts in 12 seconds, 72 grams is the mass, 12 seconds is the time. So I do 72 divided by 12 to get an answer of 6 grams per second. And it's grams per second because I was working with a mass, not a volume. If 81 centimetres cubed of oxygen is produced in 45 seconds, then I do the volume divided by the time. Remember, you're always dividing by time. That gives me an answer of 1.8 centimetres cubed per second. And remember, the cubed sign is part of the units because we're talking about a volume. It doesn't pay any part in the calculation that you're doing. Pause the video now and see if you can have a go at the remaining eight questions. Okay. So if 56 grams of tin reacts in seven seconds, that's a rate of eight grams per second. If 15.4 centimetres cubed of fluorine reacts in 2.8 seconds, that's a rate of 5.5 centimetres cubed per second. If 156 centimetres cubed of ethane burns in 13 seconds, that's a rate of 12 centimetres cubed per second. If it takes 7.5 seconds for 150 grams of magnesium to react, that's a rate of 20 grams per second. Hopefully you spotted in that one that the mass and the time were the other way around. If it takes 18 seconds for 7.2 grams of zinc to react, that's a rate of 0.4 grams per second. If after 11 seconds, 154 centimetres cubed of sulphur dioxide has been made, that's a rate of 14 centimetres cubed per second. If after 10 seconds, out of a starting mass of 200 grams of phosphorus, only 20 grams is left, then in that reaction, 180 grams has been used. So 180 grams divided by 10 seconds gives us a rate of 18 grams per second. And finally, if I only have 10 grams of carbon left, having started with 80, and that reaction has taken 1.4 seconds, then that's a rate of 50 grams per second. You may also be asked to describe the rate of a reaction based on a graph. Firstly, on a qualitative level, the steeper a graph is, the faster the rate. So if these two lines represent two reactions, the green line represents a chemical reaction with a faster rate, and we can tell because it's steeper. But we can also use a graph numerically to work out what the actual rate is. We know that the rate is the amount of reactant used or the amount of product made divided by the time taken. So if I look at these two lines here, I can use the numbers on the graph to complete this calculation. For the purple line, there's been a mass change of 5 grams in 10 seconds. So 5 grams divided by 10 seconds gives me a rate of 0.5 grams per second. For the green line, the mass change is 9 grams in 10 seconds. So the rate is 9 divided by 10, which is 0.9 grams per second. You can see from the numbers that the green line is faster, which we already knew because the line was steeper. In reality, there are virtually no reactions that are going to give you a straight line graph. And the reason for that is that at the start of the reaction, it's going to go faster because the concentration is higher. As the reaction carries on and the reactant particles get used up, 
it's far less likely that two reactant particles are going to meet and collide and react. When we're looking at most reactions, the graph will look a little bit more like this. At the beginning, the graph is steeper because that's the fastest part of the reaction. And then gradually, the gradient decreases as the reaction slows until eventually it becomes completely horizontal when the reaction stops. For a reaction like this, there are two mathematical things I might be asked to do. The first one is to work out the mean rate of reaction. Over that entire 10 second period, what's the average rate of reaction? I do this by taking the start and the end of the line and not really worrying about the fact that the gradient changes in between. So over the course of this reaction, the mass change is six and the time taken is 10. So my mean rate of reaction will be six divided by 10, which is 0.6 grams per second. The other thing you can be asked to do is to work out exactly what the rate is at a particular timestamp, say four seconds. To do this is really challenging because that's such a small part of the graph. So what we do is we draw a line called a tangent. A tangent is a long straight line that only touches the curve in one place. You want to make sure that the gap on the left and the right of the line is the same size. And this is easiest to do if you actually put your ruler on top of the curve rather than underneath or you could turn your page upside down. You want to make your tangent as long as you possibly can because this will make it more accurate. And then you use that straight line and you work out the gradient of that straight line because it should be the same as the curve. So here, my tangent goes from two grams to nine grams, which is a change of seven grams, and that's taken 10 seconds. So seven divided by 10 gives me a rate at the four second mark of 0.7 grams per second. Now let's say I wanted to know what the rate was at seven seconds. The graph is much flatter here, so I am expecting a smaller number. Again, I draw a tangent. It needs to touch the curve in just one place at seven seconds. Then I use that line and I work out the gradient of that line. So here, my line has gone from four and a half grams to six and a half grams. In the exam, you're gonna have intermediate lines to make this a little bit more accurate. And that's taken 10 seconds. So that's a change of two over a time of 10, which gives me a rate of 0.2 grams per second. Hopefully you're now feeling more confident with the mathematical side of rates of reaction. Thank you very much for watching. And if you did find this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe below.